From paddle, pedal to motor, Old Town continues to prove that they are top of the food chain. Oh, there we go. There we go. And now that I have my hands on a Sportsman Autopilot with a 106 powered by Makota, I need to find out if it can accomplish two important tasks in the tournament scene. Can it truly anchor without touching the ground while fighting fish? And is it silent enough to maintain what makes kayak fishing so special? My name's Chris Castro, host of Next Level Fishing TV, and you're watching my Top Gear series. In saltwater fishing, you know, you're, you're going to discover many different types of layout of the land. In the salt, we, we have different environments where a paddle might work great, a drive might work better, or a brand new motorized kayak might be able to take advantage of something that all of those can. I'm approaching this as a tournament angler, right? I'm looking for a kayak that is going to give me a different opportunity to better myself on certain situations. So let's get to the good stuff and what we're doing today. Uh, this spot lock is 45 pounds of thrust. Now I'm thinking, well, that's pretty good. That's, that's actually good enough for a small boat. Typically on the bigger boats, they'll aim for like an 80 pound, but a 45 pound is still pretty legit, not to mention for a kayak. What I want to know is, you know, I, I sort of talked about th this kayak and this whole spot lock stuff. It being just, it could change the way you fish, uh, not only against your friends, not only just day to day, but also in a tournament scene. I want to see if I can get on some good reds, stay stationary, not disrupt them, not disturb them, and stay put while I'm fighting these reds. And I'm going for upper slots, right? So these are good eight pounders, six pounders, uh, sort of in between that. And uh, these are tournament winning redfish. So uh, it should be, should be dope. It, it should be fun, it should be exciting. I plan on setting some hook sets on this episode. So um, y'all stick around, let's get to it. Do you have questions or ideas for Next Level Fishing TV? We'd love to hear them. Feel free to email us at nextlevelfishingtv at gmail.com. Just being able to lean on one side of this kayak and walk up uh, is pretty crazy, dude. Definitely do feel like you're on a bass boat, I'll tell you that much. This whole area right here is just me at the bow of a boat and I've got everything right here. So I'm controlling every every bit of my movement. You know, let's slow this down for instance. And I've just gone from passing up a lot of fish to potentially getting some opportunity out here. Stability wise, uh, this thing is pretty dang stable. There's not a lot of kayaks I can actually get sideways on and walk up right here to the edge. Um, <laughs> this is one, which is pretty neat. Now you do feel the boat, but it's just because of the, the hole design on it, it really gives you a good sense of just, like it just grabs. Right when it just leans over, it grabs pretty good and then you're like, oh, okay, there it is. I feel it now, you know, it, it's, it's stable. You know, it's kind of a W shape hole. So it's like a pontoon. Um, but I mean, look, like for me to put all my weight on the left and all my weight on the right and just go back and forth, you can really get a feel for the stability on this thing. You know, typically the older you get in fishing, the better you are. Uh, you age like a fine wine because of knowledge. But when you blend kayaking and fishing, at least from a competitive standpoint, what I've found is when you blend the two of uh, fishing and kayaking, there, there is a bit of physicality involved. Um, it, it changes the whole spectrum of competition. You sort of begin to see this race of a younger generation who can push further, work harder, and although they may not have as much knowledge as the old man next door, um, you know, they're able to just grind a lot harder and, and you just see them more frequently on the top. With these motorized kayaks, it really has just opened it back up to what you know 
is everything. And it's really interesting to see that sort of play out. You're gonna get guys that can unlock the potential. The further, more advanced these get technologically, especially with GPS, uh, perhaps in the future, pre-programming routes within your fish finders, you know, all that stuff I, I sort of foresee coming. And, and once that gets put into play, it's anybody's ball game. You know, your, your bass guys out there on power boats, a lot of them have age on them. You know, they have years of grinding. Uh, in the kayak industry, it's always been sort of the younger generation that's always worn the crown uh, for the accept of, of a few, but you know, that's sort of been the tell of the tape. I've come up to a school of redfish and I'm excited to test out two things. Can I fight these reds and maintain the position that I need to hold the area? And is the motor silent enough to where I can get close and still do work without spooking fish? All right guys, I got my first red here. And I'm on spot locks, so we're gonna test this out. You guys can see there's a lot of reds. What's awesome is I was able to spot lock it, fight this fish, and there's still a bunch of reds blowing up right there. Next test is to see how I can sneak up on them. Switch things up a little bit. So far, it's pretty clear that this kayak can handle both those situations. You know, whether I'm coming up on schools of redfish uh, or, or trying to sneak up on them, uh, you know, two things are for sure. I can make those subtle adjustments, stay quiet enough with the Minkota motor where uh, I, I can always reposition myself. 
And if I'm gonna sit there and just hit on a particular area, whether it be deep water or shallow water, that motor is without a doubt strong enough to maintain and hold those positions to where I, I don't have to anchor and create any disturbance underneath the actual kayak. They're still, they're still. We're gonna get them. I really shouldn't have even went after that red, <laughs> but I just love it when reds uh, are cruising like that. If I'm not doing nothing, it's hard not to intercept them. Oh, oh, it's right at it. Yeah, that's definitely, it's probably right at four pounds. My bokas are, they underestimate. They've underestimated all year, so like, all of my, what I thought were right under eight pounds, they all went over eight pounds. Now, one thing I did want to test out before we wrap this up was, uh, I did want to go on a collision course with the red. I was looking for just the weather to sort of lay down a good calm setting where I'm perhaps going through a slough or, or making a, a cross and running into schools or maybe one just sort of moseying around. Uh, I ran into a situation where I was actually going sort of up current and a uh, red was actually coming towards me. The important thing here is that I have my motor running, that's one. I have a red moving towards me in an extreme quiet setting and these fish can be very spooky in that sort of scenario. So it was reassuring to, to know that I could still use the stealth of this motor, uh, even when traditionally it would be difficult. Goodness. Is that it? I hope y'all saw that. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta be a little patient with it. No, don't go that way. I 
beautiful. Beautiful. Oh yeah. Look at the eyes on that one. Wicked. Guys, I hope y'all enjoyed this Top Gear episode. I think we've covered a lot of great information, at least on, on the strength of this motor and how it can sort of change and, and, and adapt your game into different styles of fishing. Not so much uh, anything new, right? But just new in the kayak industry. We're able to approach fishing just a little bit different. And I think we're gonna continue to see these changes as the technology improves. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and go ahead and share it with all your friends. Until next time, we'll see you soon.